All right. Thanks, Mary. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Eliza Prescott, and as Mary said, I am the Sustainability Coordinator for Lewis and Clark County up in Helena, Montana, and very excited to be speaking with all of you about all the great stuff Lewis and Clark County is doing. This webinar is also a really great timing. I'm actually down in sunny Scottsdale, Arizona right now, and I've been at a green business conference for the last three days. Uh, it's been really interesting to hear about what some of, the, some of these larger business and corporations are doing um, in the realm of sustainability. A lot of things I didn't know that they were doing uh, and hoping to bring some of that back to our smaller businesses up in Montana. So it's all very, very timely. Um, and so just want to talk to you guys a little bit about what we have been doing. Over the last few years, Lewis and Clark County has been working really hard to encourage, promote, and support resource efficiency, energy conservation, and economic savings throughout our community. And this includes what we're doing within the county government itself, as well as broader populations, including our businesses and individuals. Uh, within the county, we just finished a $1.4 million project upgrading all of our 30 county facilities. And this was from our Augusta Jail to Myrna Loy Theater Center, um, upgrading them with more efficient lighting, heating, and cooling systems. And this has been a really um, tremendous undertaking for the county to step up and um, say we're going to look at our systems and we're going to see where we can save and we've you know we've really started to see some of the savings not all the upgrades have been done but starting to see the economic savings of of these upgrades which not only do I like to see as the sustainability coordinator but our taxpayers really like to see that as well um, and then within our community, we have developed uh, the Tri-County Energy Efficiency Small Grant Program, which I'll talk about, our Green Business Program, Green Drinks Event, and we have a county green team as well. And all of these work with our community to be more energy efficient and reduce our energy costs. And if we could go to the next slide. Uh, so in 2010, we received a $305,000 grant from EPA for a Climate Showcase Communities grant. And the project we proposed was to help small businesses in three counties, including Lewis and Clark County, Broadwater, and Jefferson, to complete energy upgrades. And I do want to point out that many of the communities within these three counties are relatively rural communities. Um, the largest population we have there is in Lewis and Clark. We have Helena, which only has about, uh, we're not even quite at 30,000 people. So these are all pretty small and rural communities. Um, and so there's over 30 million small businesses in the United States who collectively spend more than $60 billion on heating, cooling, and lighting their workplaces every year. And these businesses can see between a 10 and 30 percent reduction in these costs by simply modifying behaviors and investing in energy upgrades. A small business is defined in the U.S. depending on the industry the business is in. A manufacturing small, small business has between a maximum of 500 and 1,500 employees depending on the type of product being manufactured. An agricultural small business has Annual, re annual receipts not to exceed half a million to nine million dollars. And small businesses are defined a lot differently in other countries. In Australia, a small business has no more than 15 employees, while, is, while in the EU, a small business has no more than 50 employees. For our program, the Tri-County Small Business Efficiency Program, we use Northwestern Energy's definition of a small business. They, not surprisingly, use, an ener use energy to, to determine what business is considered small. If a business has an average peak demand of 300 kilowatts or less, they qualify to participate in Northwest Energy's E-plus program, as well as our program. And there's approximately 3,000 small businesses in this tri-county area. Next slide. 
With our Showcase Communities Grant, we have had 153 businesses participate in the Tri-County Small Business Efficiency Program. The first step was for the business to have an energy audit. Then, if there, if there were recommendations outlined in the audit that could be done to reduce their energy, energy consumption, we paid up to $1,500 towards these upgrades. And we also helped the businesses through the process of getting an energy audit completed. And this task can be pretty, can seem pretty daunting for a lot, a lot of business owners. The businesses were required to contribute a portion of the money towards the upgrades and Northwest Energy provided rebates for some of the upgrades. This is why, as you can see, um, the $300,000 investment actually equated to a $500,000 investment in energy upgrades. <clears throat> 750,000 kilowatt hours per year were saved, and these businesses are saving $100,000 per year with 700 tons of greenhouse gases not being produced, which is really just a phenomenal number that we look at the small businesses that we have in our community can make such a great impact. Next slide. Even without additional outside funding, businesses can see a 10 to 30% reduction in their utility costs by making behavioral changes and completing minor energy upgrades. Now that our EPA grant funding has been fully utilized, we started a green business program in the Tri-County area, which is a free certification program that recognizes businesses for their resource efficiency efforts. Businesses who participate have access to resources to help increase efficiency, cut costs, and decrease their, decrease their environmental impact. To become certified as a business, a business must complete three core requirements, and this involves having an energy audit completed, uh, and this is free through Northwest Energy, and again, we help them through this audit process. They must write and adopt an environmental policy statement, and they must recycle as much as feasibly possible for their business. They must also complete three additional actions from a broad range of categories, and this is from energy conservation, water conservation, to waste reduction. And we work with individual companies so that if they're a food company, one of their categories could be buying local food. So we really work with the communities to figure out what, what the best way for their specific business is. And to date, we have 27 businesses that are green certified. In Montana, like a lot of places, businesses are some of the strongest leaders in our communities. And by implementing greener practices, sharing their success stories with other, others, and engaging their customers and employees, green businesses can affect positive financial and environmental change in our communities. Next slide. Uh, in addition, Helena recently began uh, its first ever green drinks event in the area. Green Drinks is an international program with events in countries spanning from Japan to Argentina to Estonia. These events are simple and unstructured, but people have found employment, made friends, developed new ideas, and made great connections. Every month, people in Helena with an interest in environmental sustainability can get together at these informal gatherings. Folks from NGOs, business, academia, government, and the local community across the political and economic spectrum are welcome to enjoy the opportunity to chat and network at Green Drinks. This has been a continuation of our efforts to support local businesses practicing sustainability and gather community members and around sustainability efforts. Next slide. So along with um, Lewis and Clark's county com county's commitment to um, really working within the county government to reduce our footprint, um, we also started a green team in 2010. And the Lewis and Clark County green team consists of county members who are committed to the principles of financial and environmental sustainability within county operations. As as a group, the Green Team has been successful in ad advocating change within Lewis and Clark County government operations. 
the successful projects that we have include um, we have installed recycling bins in the city county buildings. Um, this also includes um, not only paper and plastic, but we have a battery recycling. We have organized an annual bike to bike to work month, created a winter coat drive for America Recycles Day, um, and here we collected um, 300 winter coats. And we have also created an environmentally preferred purchasing policy, uh, which has really helped us look at everything that we purchase as a as a county and see where we can really switch over to more sustainable products, um, generally saving money. Most recently, we switched the entire city county office building over to recycled paper, which has been a really great uh, opportunity for us. Uh, next slide. And so as, as you can see, as I just talked about the green team, um, our preferred purchasing policy, um, our American Recycles Day winter coat drive, um, and our battery recycling in five of our county buildings has really been a successful, um, successful steps into reducing our impact. And they're really little steps that we've been able to take. Um, and that's a lot of what we, we tell our businesses, too, is that doing simple things like switching out light bulbs or taping up windows and weatherizing their their buildings can be really, really helpful. Um, and we like to help and support these businesses. Next slide. Um, and finally, as you can see on your um, screens there, I've got three three websites with what I've what we've talked about um, when I talked to you folks about um, and all of them have great resources about how you can implement these in your own communities. They are really, we were very fortunate to have the EPA grant, but there's a lot of great things that can be done um, within your communities to reduce energy consumption and um, increase resource efficiency. Um, and I'll be happy to answer any questions at the end of this program. And as you can see, I've got my contact information up there. And um, welcome anybody to contact me if you have any questions about what Lewis and Clark County is doing. Eliza, thank you so much. Larry, are, do we have you on the line now? Larry, if you're able to join us, um, I'm not sure if your phone might be muted and needs to be unmuted. Hello? Everyone, we will give Larry just a moment um, to try to join us here on the line. Uh, we would typically reserve our questions for the end, but at this point, if anybody does have any questions specifically for Eliza and the presentation that she just gave, feel free to type those in and um, or continue to think about them, and we will get to those at the end. Um, Larry, I'm not sure if you might be able to um, actually hang up the line and, and perhaps call in again. And thank you, everyone, so much for bearing with us as we navigate some technical issues. Appreciate that. Um, in the meantime, while we're waiting for Larry, I will just remind you again about our website. And here are also some of the websites for some of our other programs, if you'd like to check out those. Um, Peakstoprairies.org is our website for our organization, and then tribalp2.org is a website for our Tribal Pollution Prevention Network, and e3.peakstoprairies.org is the website for our Economy, Energy, and Environment Initiative for Montana Agriculture. This, again, is the schedule for the rest of the webinar series. We would love it if you would put this on your calendar and join us on March 20th for our next webinar about purchasing and office practices, April 17th, transportation planning, 
May 15th water conservation and catchment and June 19th for green building and integrated pest management. You can access our website at greenlocalgovernment.org. And I do believe I see here that Larry has exited um, the call and will hopefully be trying to call back in here in just one moment. This is our website, and here on the home page is where you'll be able to access our webinar recordings. You can learn more about the webinar series, sign up for the newsletter, and view past webinars. And here is the um, introductory tour video that we made where um, you can just watch a quick seven-minute video that shows you a quick tour of the site and the resources that you'll find on it. And this video also takes you through the process for um, registering to actually enter your own case study into our site, which we would love to invite all of you to do. Let's see, we do have a question here asking whether the presentation PowerPoints are available online. Yes, actually, if you go to view our past webinars, you'll see that with our last webinar on January 16th, we have the presentation files here as well as the video file for the recorded webinar. Hi, Larry. Hello, can you hear Are us? Are you with us? Yes, Hello? perfect. <laughs> yes, I can uh, hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I don't know what we did. Um, we, <laughs> no problem. We've got up. you back we're, now. Okay, sorry. We well, apologize. Um, no problem. No problem. Thank you so much for joining us. Everyone, this is Larry Pardee, and he will be speaking to us about the Jackson Hole Energy Sustainability Project. And I'm going to go ahead and get your presentation up here on the screen. And uh, so I will move through these slides for you. Please feel free to just let me know when you'd like me to advance to the next slide. Thank you so much, Larry, and uh, take it away. Uh, good afternoon. Hi, Larry Pardee with the Town of Jackson. I am the Director of Public Works. I also have Johnny Zeem, our Wastewater Treatment Plant Manager, who's going to join me, and he'll be talking uh, during the second half of our slides. We have about 10 or 12 slides for you, and we're just going to walk through and kind of talk quickly about the initiatives the Town of Jackson, Teton County, and Lower Valley Energy, our local co-op company, have been working on collectively um, since uh, early 2007. Uh, if you would, next slide, please. As you can see in the screen, um, I've uh, got, put in some photos of Jackson, Wyoming. Um, we are the southern gateway into Grand Teton National Park and Yellowstone National Park. We also, on our very northern border, have the National Elk Refuge. So millions of acres are preserved uh, in perpetuity. For, for not just our generation, but future generations. And that's uh, probably one of the primary reasons uh, the mayor, uh, our current sitting mayor, Mayor Mark Barron, who was elected in 2002, uh, really challenged uh, staff to come up with a plan, uh, along with Teton County, to work collectively together to create an action plan to do something in terms of energy savings. We, we approached it as a community from a different scale far less about the environment and um, global warming and far more about practicality and cost savings. Even though we are the Southern Gateway, uh, we're a community of about uh, 9,500 souls that live year-round. Teton County is the county we live in. It's got a little over 21,000 folks that live in it year-round. We average a little over 4 million guest visitors a year. So energy conservation in this community is a, is a big deal because it takes a lot of energy to provide our municipal services to the local community and the guests that come through. Um, and you're going to see in some slides coming up, we'll show you some energy snapshots of where we're at. But uh, 
Yellowstone, the greater uh, Yellowstone ecosystem directly south of the, the great Yellowstone caldera is comprised of over 18 million acres, which makes up the greater Yellowstone ecosystem and remains one of the largest relatively intact temperate zone ecosystems left on planet Earth. We have the nation's largest roaming herds of elk, bison, antelope, who share the wild and varied habitat with deer, wolves, grizzly, black bear, mountain lions, wolverines, and, and a great diversity of migratory uh, bird species. Uh, for the town, it is part of our mission uh, that we believe uh, it would be irresponsible for us not to do something in terms of fostering partnerships to solve problems, more effectively use our resources. We appreciate the unique environmental resources and the scenic beauty where we live, work, and acknowledge our responsibilities to future generations. When our mayor talks, he talks about not just looking through our eyes or our children's eyes, but our grandchildren's eyes and our great-grandchildren's eyes, that we make choices today that, that not just preserves, but protects and actually makes uh, the environment and sustainability as a local community to the southern gateway to the national park sustainable. So we, uh, next slide please. 10 by 10, Teton County, Town of Jackson, and Laura Valley Energy joined forces together early in 2007 and created an efficiency advisory board. Out of that came seven action teams uh, that each work collectively in, in individual areas to identify strategies to improve energy efficiency within town and county government operations only. We didn't we decided to get our own house in order before we took it out to a community wide. It was clear from a cultural point of view um, in the northwest corner of Wyoming uh, we had a lot a, uh, a lot to overcome. We're a very conservative community by nature and there were some that feared that this was some motive from uh, the left wing or however you want to state it. But uh, so culturally it was an interesting challenge convincing our organizations to get on board and uh, work with us to come up with strategies to to achieve the 10 by 10. 10 by 10 is simply we are going to reduce our energy consumption 10 percent town and county agencies by December 31st 2010. And out of that the seven action plans came forth you know for fuels and vehicles, buildings and energy, land use planning, public transportation, communication, baseline data and so on. And out of each of those created an action plan and a, and a very well written um, 2007 uh, Jackson Hole Energy uh, 10 by 10 action plan. And that's really what we've been sort of operating on for a while since early 2007. And we the 2010 has come and gone, but out of that came the community initiative. And if you would turn to the next slide, please. Uh, whoa. Um, sorry about that. I guess uh, the <laughs> my uh, photos up there got all over the map. Um, the, the one thing I wanted to say about uh, our 10 by 10, and, I, and uh, Myla mentioned this to me a week ago, a lot of communities are trying to figure out how to get started. And the first thing that we would suggest, if you're a, a town, a county, a state agency, uh, a nonprofit, or even just a, a, a large business that's trying to figure out a strategy to, be, to begin somewhere, for us, even before we knew what we were going to do, we knew one thing. We needed to create an inventory of all our energy sources and create a baseline data to, to re capture it on an annual basis. So we identified every single energy account and just built a simple Excel sheet to start tracking it monthly, how much of each energy source, what does it cost, and so on, and, and that's uh, how we got started. Um, I apologize, the, some of the graphs that we, um, charts and stuff I threw up there are fairly distorted, but uh, y you get the point that out of the baseline data, uh, good information and data tracking helps you to determine how well you're doing. And any good business, public or private, the first thing is you need to know your inventory and how much you use. Once you know that, then you can begin to create um, action plans or strategies to improve upon those numbers that you, you've been tracking against. Next slide, please. Um, Elisa said it earlier, uh, same thing for us. We did energy audits after we created our action, uh, action plan. 
we identified all town and county facilities, which were quite a few. We brought in energy service companies. We performed energy audits. And we sort of grouped everything into three categories. We, the first level is sort of the low-hanging fruit, the, the, you know, the low-cost, quick return on investment, weather stripping, caulking, programmable thermostats, light bulbs, insulation, simple things. Uh, the next level that costs a little more money, takes a little longer for payback, was uh, kind of a level two. That's windows, doors, heating, cooling, appliances, things like that. And that you know, in that range, you're probably more in the, you know, four to six, maybe even six to eight year range of payback, depending on what type of uh, systems you're using, windows and doors. And then the third level of energy efficiency uh, measures that we looked at were renewables, um, you know, solar, wind, geothermal, uh, and stuff like that. So what we did is out of those audits, we developed a huge five-year action plan, and each town and county on their own, as funding and time uh, became available, we began to implement um, uh, cost-saving cost -saving measures in each of our facilities. And for the town of Jackson, we invested a little over $4 million in the last six years in terms of energy efficiency. But it's, it's most of it probably was in relationship to facilities and photovoltaic systems. Uh, we were fortunate to get a lot of grant money from the ERA funds and through the state. And then we also leveraged a lot of local dollars ourselves. But together, we spent a little over four and a half million dollars. Uh, the town only uh, used about 16 percent of that was town funds. So we've been able to make substantial improvements to our existing facilities. In some cases, a lot of our facilities are, are fairly old and worn down. So it was time to make those investments, even if we chose to go with energy efficiency or not. Next slide, please. So that's kind of a quick snapshot. Our 10 by 10 got the town and county and Lower Valley to work cooperatively together. We sort of disbanded under 10 by 10. Teton County continues to do what they're doing. Um, on energy efficiency and conservation, Town of Jackson, same, and Lower Valley. But then we came together under a, a, a new umbrella, and it's called the Energy Conservation Works. Now, this is reaching out on a community scale. We're no longer just working on town and county government operations, but we're working on the greater Teton County, Town of Jackson as a whole. Um, through that program, again, we we're not 100% sure, but it's a, a very historic to us tri-party agreement that is a, it, it's a joint powers board that's made up of Teton County, Town of Jackson, and Lower Valley, and three citizens at large that have the authority to borrow money, hire staff, and implement um, similar uh, strategies to the community. And just like Elisa said from um, um, uh, earlier, uh, she mentioned a lot of the programs that we're implementing. We have energy audit uh, programs for residential. We have energy audit programs and um, grant or grant and loan programs for commercial, commercial and residential. Uh, the the uh, energy conservation works um, has sort of been a fledgling thing, but it's finally defined itself. It has a clear mission and a clear strategy of making energy efficiency available as the cheapest cost resource in our community. Lower Valley Energy is our co-op, and I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with co-ops here in the West. We're part of, part of Bonneville Power, who supplies our energy, our electrical energy to us. And Bonneville, more or less, is, is uh, peaked out. So it's, a, it's an opportune time for the energy conservation works to begin its community initiative. And it started a couple of years ago, but we're really hitting our stride now. We've been able to raise substantial funding in different ways. And um, we did a local Fed election, which is uh, we asked our taxpayers for three, $3.8 million to make energy efficiency improvements to commercial facilities. We've received, uh, through a, a rural electrical development agreement through Laura Valley Energy, a little over a million dollars, $1.5 million um, for commercial energy upgrades. That includes energy audits and energy improvements that uh, meet certain criteria. And then our residential program is a um, sort of a grant loan from the state of Wyoming. 
um, that was also part of the ERA program that has uh, put about $1.5 million that we use to lend out or grant to residential folks for energy audits and energy efficiency measures that go into their homes to save energy. So it's, it's been a great program. Um, it's, uh, we just uh, hired a brand new executive director. He hasn't even officially started yet. He's a member of our community, but he'll be joining us soon. Uh, ideally, he would have been the person talking today and not me. But uh, uh, it's, it's an honor to represent our community and, and talk about sort of our journey and the things we've worked on. Uh, next slide, please. As I was talking about, Bonneville Power, in the transmission system in federal dams, up in the, the, the right half of the screen is a great shot of uh, Oregon, Washington, Montana, Idaho, and you can just see a little bit of Wyoming on the far right. That's Jackson Teton County area. Um, we're part of the Bonneville system, and so it's 69% it's, uh, uh, hydro, hydroelectricity. The other thing I'd like to mention is the town of Jackson, in 2007, Mayor Barron uh, spearheaded an, um, a strategy with Lower Valley Energy, and 100% of our electricity that we buy each year is through hydro. Even though we're getting uh, uh, the main power feed through Bonneville Power, we purchased uh, a local uh, resource. Um, a dam that was certified, the first in Wyoming, as a low-impact dam, and we took 100% of the town's electricity and and bought into that. So we're 100% uh, hydroelectricity for for our government operations to uh, our local community. And then on the other side, um, the residential rate structure, and this is from 2011, but it's it's still fairly consistent today. As you can see. These are national averages by state, but if you look down in the lower left, it shows lower valley energy rate of 5.8 cents. We're some of the cheapest power in the United States. And a lot of people ask, why in the world would you want to do energy efficiency if you got such cheap power? Well, Bonneville Power is maxed out, and, they're, and they uh, asked the uh, 50-some co-ops that they uh, supplied power to in the northwest quadrant here. Um, should they grow their system or do they want the, those, those co-ops to go out on their own and secure their own future um, increase in energy and uh, for electrical energy and they all chose to go on their own. So Bonneville is sort of maxed out at this time and I don't think in the short term they're planning on growing their systems from what I hear but it puts a great challenge on us because now we're instead of buying 5.8 cents we're buying 10.5 to 11 cents tier 2 power because we've used up, uh, we, we're maxed out on the quantity we get from Bonneville at a lower rate. So it, it, it is imperative as uh, members of a co-op, which means uh, if one person saves, we all save. If the newest person in gets a higher rate, we all have to share in that rate. So it's extremely important for our organization um, as, as an organization and as a um, a community to work collectively together as Teton County, Town of Jackson, and Lower Valley Energy. Uh, and that's what really sort of drives us to keep a sharp focus on it. Um, this week in the newspaper, Lower Valley Energy has just uh, notified the ratepayers that they're increasing their rates again because Bonneville's increasing their rates. So 5.8 cents, our, our happy days of low cost electricity have now passed us. Next slide, please. Here's a great snapshot of um, how we use electrical energy in Teton County. And I apologize, my, uh, what am I paying for? Um, for some reason, it it's not working. <laughs> it was actually a pie chart made up of uh, circles and different percentages, but um, unfortunately, it doesn't show. The 62% was used for heating in, in Teton County. And I, I suspect some of you are familiar with uh, Jackson Hole and Teton County. Um, well, it, it's a beautiful area, but our winters are very cold. The valley floor, um, we're surrounded by mountains, and the valley floor sits at about 6,200 feet. And we have this um, sort of inversion that goes on quite a bit of the winter where the, actually it's warmer at the top of the mountains and cooler um, down on the valley floor. So it's not uncommon uh, to have temperatures minus, you know, teens, 20s, even the 30 below. 
and which means since electricity is our primary source of heat for most homes in Teton County, um, if you look to the right, you'll see the U.S. average uses on a monthly basis 958 kilowatt hours a month. Wyoming uses 883. The highest state um, uses 1,393, but Teton County, the average citizen uses 1,800. So uh, it is uh, the, our new program for the community is highly important to helping our folks reduce that number, particularly in light of the fact that the energy costs are rising and going to rise quickly. The 10-year the outlook for energy pricing uh, through our energy supplier, Lower Valley Energy, doesn't look good. They're telling us for sure, if not every two years, every three years, we can expect a fairly healthy uh, adjustment in rates, both for electricity, natural gas, and propane. Next slide. And with that, um, that's kind of a quick overview of the 10 by 10, how we all got started together and then how we now have engaged in, in work sort of on a community scale. But now we're going to bring it back to what the, what the Jackson is doing at this time. And I'm going to let Johnny Zeem take it from here. Unfortunately, I apologize to you all. I wish I could stay and answer questions, but I have to go join our mayor, Mark Barron. And we're doing another conference call uh, with eight states in the southwest uh, here in a few minutes. And it's also in relationship to uh, everything we're talking about right now, so it's ironic that I have to do two webinar conversations back to back, uh, working with federal agencies and having the opportunity to share our story uh, state by state. So it's truly been an honor. I thank you all. And here is Johnny Zeem that's going to talk about where we're going next as a town. Hi, everybody. My name is Johnny. I'm the wastewater treatment plant manager. Uh, here in Jackson, Wyoming. Um, I was uh, one of the chairs on the new uh, 40 by 20 initiative, um, which we've been working on uh, the plan for for the last maybe year or so. Um, this is on the kind of on the heels of the 10 by 10 initiative. And uh, some of the things I'll just briefly go over is uh, biggest thing was, you know, that there different in terms of how we are looking at our data. So the 10 by 10 initiative was a quantitative based uh, set of goals where we were just trying to lower uh, the amount of uh, energy in each goal. So um, it wasn't tied to any sort of efficiency. It was totally quantitative. In the new 40 by 20 initiatives, we are really looking at um, kind of as the goals state uh, an efficiency factor. So we'll be looking at, for example, buildings will be measured on a uh, BTU per square foot basis um, and you know some of our other efficiencies would be uh, like our water efficiencies would be based on gallons per fixtures. Um, the one thing I would like to stress that's still really important, and Larry kind of went over it, is uh, collecting data. We have collected pages and pages and pages of data, and it's really interesting because you have to begin to learn, uh, once you get past the stage of collecting the data, the next really important step is um, trying to understand what the data is telling you. So looking at trends, looking at history, um, and that sort of thing. So on the screen is our first three goals and um, you can go to the next slide please. And this, this screen has uh, the last four goals. There are some new goals that uh, we decided to try and uh, attain in this uh, series. We've got a trash diversion right now we're looking at uh, lowering our water usage in a lot of our facilities and um, really striving to meet uh, certain goals. And a lot of the goals you'll see, like goal five uh, is a 20% efficiency goal. 
and goal six, for example, is a 40% efficiency goal. So most of the goals are a 40% reduction. Some of the goals, like goal five, we weren't quite sure if we could really make that goal right now, so we decided to do a 20% efficiency. Um, and we are, you know, moving forward. Uh, the committee that I was a co-chair of is an all-employee committee, which is was really good for our organization to just have uh, employees kind of take the next steps forward in putting this plan together. And, and um, we presented our our goals and our plan to the council just a few weeks ago. And now we're just taking the next steps to move forward. Um, I don't know if there's a, is there another slide after this? This might be the last slide. Questions? Um, so I just want to say thanks on behalf of Larry, Pardee, and myself. Um, and that's all we've got, and so we'll be happy to answer any questions. Johnny, thank you so much. Um, really appreciate that. And, uh, Really appreciate Larry's presentation as well. Um, for everybody who's on the line, feel free at this point to type in any questions to the question team that you have in your GoTar, GoToWebinar control panel, and uh, I can relay, relay those to Johnny and Eliza. Um, thank you again both so much for being here and for sharing your experience. We'll give just a moment to see if questions come in. In the meantime, I'll just remind everybody of the Green Local Government website where you can find these recordings after this presentation today. Um, we'll get these posted within the next couple of days. From our home page, if you go to view past webinar videos, this will take you to a page where um, Right now, we have the posting of the presentation files from our last webinar on January 16th, and also the video itself of that recorded webinar. This is on the page with the information for the webinar series where all of our webinars are listed, and you can register for, from here for upcoming webinars. Um, our next one, again, is on March 20th. Purchasing and office practices at this time is what we are planning to cover on March 20th. Um, and you can come here to this page to see the rest of the series. You can also sign up if you are not yet signed up um, to receive our email updates specifically about this webinar series. You can easily do so right here on this page as well. And also to remind you one more time that from our homepage, we now have this site tour video, which is a short seven minute video um, where you can just watch a quick tour of what resources you'll find on the site. And that will also show you how to register if you have a case study from your community that you'd like to share on the site. All right, we do have a couple questions coming in here. And so I will direct these to both Johnny and Eliza. Um, the first question we have is, was there any pushback from businesses or citizens on these initiatives? So if either of you, Johnny or Eliza, have thoughts on that, was there any pushback from businesses or citizens? Uh, uh, I, oh. Go ahead, Eliza. Oh, I, um, in our experience, we have had none. Uh, to be completely honest, um, which is great. We, as far as our green business program is concerned, you know, when we initially started it, we, we did have to go out to businesses and, um, and talk to them about it and kind of get them involved. And now, um, and I should mention, this is, this is a really new program. It's only been within the last um, year or so, um, or not even year, but, um, we now have a lot of businesses coming to us and saying, I want to be certified. I'm doing these things already, um, and now I want to be recognized for it. Um, you know, the only slight, the, the biggest thing was people saying, well, I don't even know how to get an energy audit. I don't know what that involves. What do I have to pay? And, you know, when you say, oh, it's free, we'll set it up for you, people, <laughs> people are generally into that. So, you know, we've been really lucky, and maybe it's, 
due to our location, but we have really not, we've had all of our businesses and community members have been really supportive um, in doing this and really supportive of, of kind of the initiatives that the county is doing. And a follow-up with that, um, I, I would say we haven't had really any big pushback from the community. Uh, we we really had to focus a lot on the culture of our organization, uh, kind of more internally, um, for our kind of measures that we wanted to take. And uh, you know we made some mistakes along the way in terms of communication and stuff and stuff like that. But I think uh, overall, you know, I one of the big big pills to swallow, uh, if, so to say, is you know a lot of these energy efficiency measures that we're undertaking, uh, you know, are kind of a big investment up front. And, you know, when you talk about uh, building, you know, we're building LEED certified buildings for our uh, city buildings. We are installing, you know, solar systems. Uh, we're installing uh, just higher efficiency uh, equipment. You know, there there is a kind of big cost associated with that. So I think it's not so much of a pushback as much as, you know, people kind of like paying attention to, you know, what the investments will be. Great. Thank you both so much. Our next question um, is for Larry and Johnny. So that would be you, Johnny, at this point. Um, <laughs> I believe that this person is, is referring to goal number four on this slide. Um, the question is, in diverting 100% of your waste stream, does that mean 100% recycling? Yes, it. Um, the the way the goal should read, it, it shouldn't read a hundred percent. We we strived to set up a fifty percent diversion rate. So um, I apologize. It should read um, that fifty percent of our waste stream will be diverted. And yes, it does include recyclables. Um, we actually attempted to do this. A specific goal in 2006 when we started the 10 by 10 but it was a really hard goal to kind of capture data so you know in a, if you're a community or if you're an organization or a municipality that actually like has your own trucks your garbage trucks for example to uh, kind of get data for you um, from all your buildings that's a you know that's a really good first easy step and we didn't have that and nor did we have any um, contractors in town that were willing to uh, pretty much upgrade one of their garbage trucks to be able to weigh our our garbage so basically now you know we're focusing on the data we're, we're measuring our our outputs and then you know we as an organization for public works we actually recycle quite a bit so um, the goal there is going to be just to try and capture all the things that we recycle you know oil tires batteries metal and just do a weight by weight comparison I think I hope that answers the question great thank you so much if anyone else has a question feel free at this time to type that into the question panel and I will relay that to our presenters um, again, I want to thank you both so much and thank you to Larry for sharing all of this information today. It's been um, really, really interesting. And again, this presentation will be available on the website. We'll give just another moment for questions to come in if anybody has them. And I'll just remind you in the meantime that our website for this project is greenlocalgovernment.org. From the home page, you can access all of the information about this webinar series, including um, seeing the schedule, registering, signing up for the e-newsletter about the webinar series, viewing past webinar videos, and then um, also viewing our short seven-minute tour about the site and how to use the resources on the site, uh, as well as registering to submit your own case study to appear on our site. All right, I believe that's it for questions. Again, Eliza and Johnny, thank you so much. If either of you have anything else to share, please feel free to let us know. 
Yeah, the only thing I'd like I could add at the end, and I think Larry had hit on it uh, or talked about it a little bit, um, was you know how important it is to collect data, it, even if you don't know kind of what you want to do, because it, 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 it's a lot to think about when you're starting this this journey. The ability to collect your data on all your energy sources being used, and and to really understand how much you're using. Um, and create baselines, you, you, you can't really move forward until you do that. So that's really the first step. And like I said, you know, once you do that and you, and you really start to look at those numbers and begin to understand what the numbers are telling you, um, you can kind of trend, uh, you know, where you need to make changes, uh, the low-lying fruit like Larry talked about, and then, and then kind of the upper level, kind of bigger investment things um, that you know you can really take a chunk of those numbers out. Great. Thank you so much, Johnny. Um, one last reminder to everyone, greenlocalgovernment.org is your online source for all of this information. And please also join us on our next webinar, which will be on March 20th. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Thanks again.